Fancy intro music, yeah! Woohoo! Welcome to my video! My video! I don't know what I'm doing, but welcome to the Eve Echoes University 101, where today we're going to take a look at this, this bad boy, the Jamil. Oh, isn't she lovely? Oh, isn't she wonderful? And talk about how I fit it up for multiple PvP loadouts. Now, of course, some of you are going to recognize the kill markings on here that I've only got 25 and be like, ha, this noob. Yeah, well, anybody that leads alliances out there knows you spend more time dealing with in-game and Discord and... <sighs> but I do love taking her out for PvP. Also, shout out to uh, Kill Still Kogan, who's always taking my kills. That's wonderful. But I did get this really juicy one the, uh, last night with the group. That was cool. That's on my kill log. But let's talk about the Jamil. What makes it so effective? Why it's so good? And at this point, it's actually becoming one of the more reasonably priced PvP ships in terms of faction ships. You know, a lot of people are now moving on to the Cinnaball, and you, of course, we've seen Succubuses, and there are a lot of ships out there. With me doing so much stuff around Angel Systems, that's where we get the parts. It's a little bit easier for me to get this, but price has gone down. I mean, at one point, we were seeing just the Drammy itself. <clears throat> like just the ship going for six, seven hundred million. Now that has been cut in half. You're able to get, you know, decently fitted Drammies for way cheaper. And it's still a very effective PVP ship, but as more resources come available and everything, prices drop on the ships. So let's talk about what makes mine, mine, and what I like about it. Also, why are Mimitar stations so dark? Like it's just, it's so dark here. Turn some lights on people. Anyway, let's go to our fittings menu. So. I've got it currently, as you see it loaded out here, this is loaded out with a group fitting in mind. So let me get my head out the way so you can see the bottom. So watch this cool thing, <gasps> transition. Oh man, I love it when he does that, it's so cool. Now first thing people go, why is your Drammy only doing 190 DPS? Obviously skills come into account here. I'm one of those people that I have too many things split between small cannons and medium cannons because I do two different ship types. So I'm not 555 or anything in my smalls. But this is the basics. So right now I'm actually running the Gist C type small cannon, strike cannon. Now why am I not running autos? So I actually would, in this situation, flip this and show you right here what I would be doing. I've actually got it mixed here. So let me flip it back to what it should be. So let's put our Gist C type autos on. So these are the short range guns. So this is the loadout that I usually use for close range and for me, PVP that is in a group setting. So what I'll do is you see I've got my warp disruptors. Now I'm running three interruptors, which is two power each with an optimal range of 26 kilometers. I'm also running a little gyro stabilizer just a basic one just for a little bit of dps boost you activate that i'm doing well over 300 dps i have a micro warp drive using the scout small micro warp drive that 500 percent boost and then i've got the oh crap button which is my damage control now real quick i'll show you the rigs yes you're all going to talk crap about me because i've still got mark ones on there i just haven't upgraded them you do need to do mark twos mark twos is what you should be using and what i have is a cannon collision accelerator which is a 12.5 bonus obviously the mark ii is better but the reason i've started with these is they're simply cheaper you see 2.7 million a pop right now in Gita. <sighs> I had to fly to Gita today it was pain and then i've also got a, another one and then finally i've got this one which is a metastasis adjuster for the power grid but that was when I really struggled with this right here. I actually don't really need that as much now. So I could do another damage booster or you could do an accuracy fall off, which would be this cannon collision. Oh, I've got another damage accelerator. You know what? Because we've upgraded and we've got plenty of cap now, let's go ahead and put that on there and do just another DPS boost. They're cheap if I wanna go back and now I'm at 309. And then on the other side, I'm running an auxiliary thruster, which is a flight velocity adjustment. Then I've got a warp jammer strength, negative one for warp core optimizer one, and then another warp core optimizer one. So I've got a negative two in terms of my warp optimization to protect me just a little bit if I get, you know, locked on. But I run this one 
for when I'm in a group. And the reason being is I'm focusing on the micro warp drive. Remember that micro warp drive is a great thing and a bad thing at the same time because it's going to increase your profile. It's going to make you easier to hit, take away your mitigation. It's going to hurt. See that signature radius adjustment? Like you're going to get hit more and it's going to hurt more with the micro. But what I found is if I can stay on top of a player and then keep him locked down, all my other ships that we do in the fleet are going to be able to get the DPS on him needed to kill him before I die. We also will sometimes run a Lodgy ship in our fleet group so that we can keep my ship up and going and we'll just keep pounding on him. Now let's talk about what I do if I'm going by myself. So I'm going to swap these back over to the Gisty C-types. Now you're asking why, because I'm, you're gonna see a significant drop in DPS. So the reason that I go to the strike cannons over the auto cannons when I'm going range, put that there, is because what I want to do is stay away from webifiers because that's gonna be a problem for me if I'm focusing on a, a ship that, I mean, webifier range is right at 11 kilometers. So if I wanted to swap this out for a web of fire, you would see, let's see, I should have, yeah, I've got interruptive stasis sitting here. So you see its effective range is 13. A Mark V is going to be 11.2. So with these cannons right here, I could set a orbit of about 15 kilometers and stay away from web of fires. And then what I'm also going to do is swap out my, right here for a, let's see, I should have one. There's afterburner small, there's my Gisty C type. So I'm gonna put this Gisty C type afterburner on. Now I'm getting a little bit less in terms of total speed. You see my navigation here and everything, my DPS. 629 meters a second without the afterburner turned on. That afterburner is gonna give me a 153% flight adjustment. So a little bit of a jump there, not as much as a micro warp drive obviously, but enough to really get me going, increasing you know, uh, the, my speed and obviously making me a little bit harder to hit. And then what I, whoops, hop out my fittings menu on accident, go back in. And then the gyro is definitely something that we could replace for maybe something that's a little bit more like a C-type shield regen, because what you're gonna do, if you're PVPing solo, battles could last a smidge longer. Now, this is also what I do. It also makes complete sense to forego the little bit of, I go for a little bit more of safety when I'm by myself, because you could also swap this out with an Aurora Warp Core Stab, and that would give me six points of runaway. See, so yeah, I should have one here. Where are they at? So here's my Aurora Warp Core. So if I put this on there and then I activate it, I would have six points of warp notification to get out in a solo, which gives me plenty of get out speed combined with my, I always leave the oh crap button on here. Always, because it really, really does help when you activate it. Remember that 800% bonus. So on mine, when I'm running solo PVP, I go for a little bit of Stay away from web of fires so that I can just orbit the heck out of a you know a, a cruiser or a battle cruiser and take them down. Now, I'm not saying I'm the best Drammy pilot out there. I'm not. But I have found both of these methods to be very effective when it comes to doing PvP. I of course prefer to do group PvP because I'm the type of guy and the type of pirate I want maximum chance of success. I want the least probability of me dying. Now 200 DPS is not nothing to you know sniff, you know, shake a finger at. That's not bad at all. It's actually pretty good. But it's not what you're putting out with, say, you know, that daredevil that I, you know, helped fight last night that was running a very nice setup. He, he was obviously experimenting with some things. I don't agree with every part he had on there, but he definitely wasn't skipping out. I mean, he was running full rigs and everything. And, and that, I just don't want to die. I mean, these things are expensive. It's, you know, 400, 500 million for me to replace this. I don't want to replace it. It's so expensive. And the Corp doesn't have SRP for this. Contrary to what Gen Fed likes to say about us, we do not have a Drammy SRP. We don't. If we make it to that point, we will start one. <laughs> but we haven't made it to that point yet. So if you have questions about the Dramio, I ask that you drop them below. It's become my favorite PVP ship. Thrasher Fleet is probably the one I still have used the most because they're so replaceable. I can throw the same setup on Thrasher Fleet and not care if it dies because it's you know one third the price to, you know, or even cheaper than that to replace and refit. But I will say that this gives you a lot of fun, the speed that you have. Also keep in mind that the warp speed that you have, you're gonna go at you know 8 AU, 7.5 AUs traveling through systems, which if you're in NullSec allows you to jump from one gate to the next gate. If you're chasing a player and beat them to the next gate and then try to lock them as they get to the next gate. So there's a lot of advantages to flying in this very quick, very fast Angel Frigate that can put out some serious DPS, some real serious DPS. I'm gonna swap it on back into my, um, 
close range because I'm going to go out with the group and we're going to go have some fun, do some PvP. So that means I need to get back on my micro warp drive so I can make sure I stay on top of these players that are trying to get away from me. So there's my scout and going back to my close range. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, hit subscribe. If you want to know about any other fitting and any other specific ship type, drop it down in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to accommodate you, my good friends and sirs. And if it's not ship that I have, I can guarantee you I've got somebody in my alliance who's pretty proficient with what you're looking for. So I'm more than happy to help you out. Live long and prosper. Stay safe other space cowboys. And remember, shoot first, because I'm going to with this thing. See you music, yeah!